Hello and welcome back to the uh, Max Runout YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Paul. This is part three of our series on how to make uh, uh, gears in the uh, home shop automatically. And uh, today uh, we're going to talk about uh, some upgrades to the software that we made to make it a little more usable and to utilize a, a display to uh, coach uh, what the next step is. And uh, uh, then we're going to talk about uh, the components that we're going to use to repackage the uh, processor and the electronics into a, into a more usable uh, package that won't be uh, affected by the chips from the, uh, uh, from the, the cutting operation. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about a, uh, a safety system. Um, it's always a good idea to have uh, some kind of a... Uh, uh, emergency stop switch uh, because uh, no matter how hard you try the, uh, the software uh, always plays tricks on you uh, at one time or another when something happens that you don't expect and uh, so uh, uh, we're going to have a couple different things to, uh, uh, to take care of a runaway condition. Um, then we go through uh, uh, a spreadsheet that I developed to uh, uh, calculate the uh, uh, the diameter uh, that you need to make the gear blanks for a particular size gear uh, and uh, the depth uh, that you have to cut the teeth and uh, this is based on uh, the module that you choose for the gear and uh, and uh, or it's also called a diametrical pitch um, and I'll go through uh, how I pick the module and uh, and uh, where, where how we uh, determine that um, so, without uh, any further ado, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, we've added some uh, bells and whistles to the software here. Um, we're still hooked up basically in the same way we were uh, when you saw this last. Uh, but now we've uh, uh, made the software a little more usable. Um, I um, want to be able to... Uh, come back to this uh, six months or a year later and uh, and be able to uh, <clears throat> still know how to do this so I put some uh, kind of reminders in the software the first one uh, it allows you to set the table how much the table moves uh, and uh, the scale here is inches uh, well tenths of inches really so uh, at the moment we've had only asking the table to move two tenths of an inch uh, but you know you can raise this there's an up and a down button and you can uh, uh, set this well let's set it for an inch now 10 would be an inch and 20 would be two inches and you know 15 would be an inch and a half etc so uh, and then push another button here and uh, it goes to the next thing and that asks for the tooth count where uh, uh, and again, you can set that up and down to any number you want, um, up to, I guess, 256 would be the larger, 255 would be the, la the largest number, but I don't think I'll ever make a gear that big. So uh, at the moment, I got it set for uh, 10 teeth. Let's, just for fun, uh, raise that to 11 teeth, which is a, uh, an odd number, so uh, not, uh, not an even number of rotations of the, uh, of the motor. Um, and uh, then the, uh, the next thing reminds you to set the table uh, in its home position and hit the go button when you're ready to go. And uh, then it um, keeps track of how many teeth are yet to cut. It's cutting the first one now. And uh, the table's moving forward at the moment. And moving back, and now the uh, rotary table is rotating to set the next gear position. And now the, the counter dropped down to 10, um, etc. And the motors are turning now, <coughs> somewhat like they were before. Back up a little bit here. They always seem to go the wrong way first. The one on the left again is the one representing the table. Uh, we've got it a little more uh, 
uh, representative now of the uh, amount that it might have to turn. It will probably be more than an inch, but uh, <coughs> we're closer. And again, the uh, the rotary table, we're cutting a 10 or 11 tooth gear, which we probably never will do. We'll probably won't use this for more than, yeah, I don't know, maybe 12, I guess, would be the, the smallest gear that we would cut this way. And uh, But anyway, the uh, the motors are, are following the... Um, commands from the table pretty well, they are from the microcontroller. I've run this quite a bit and I haven't uh, uh, I haven't seen any new problems uh, but I did spend a couple days uh, diddling with the software getting it to where uh, to where it is now um, and um, So we'll uh, take a go back to looking at the uh, LCD thing here, and uh, down to five teeth to go now. Okay, now we're about to cut our last tooth here, and uh, then we'll go look at the motors again. Okay, when it cuts the last tooth, um, uh, it gives you an option to recut. Um, uh, the reason for this is that uh, with the little gears I'm cutting now, uh, one pass is enough to uh, cut the tooth, but uh, if I make bigger gears at some point in the future, it may take more than one pass, and this allows you to, it keeps the two motors uh, engaged, and um, and it keeps them, uh, um, uh, it keeps them energized is what I meant to say, and um, so they're still uh, this one in particular is still, I can't turn it, so it, it's, um, it's ready to recut if you, you know, if you have to make more than one pass, if you've got to cut the teeth shallow on the first uh, cut and then maybe uh, on a second or a third pass in order to get the full depth of the teeth, uh, you're set to do that and uh, uh, if you push the uh, recut button, it'll just... Uh, Restore the uh, the number of teeth back to the original number, and it'll start uh, uh, start cutting again. And you notice that even though that was an 11 tooth gear, uh, the uh, the right hand motor is pointing uh, straight up again, uh, back uh, where it was originally. So it completed the cycle accurately, and now uh, uh, it's ready to go for another pass if that's what you want to do. And if not, you just hit the reset button, and uh, we're set to go. So I think the software's pretty well along. Uh, it's running fine on this uh, board now, this uh, the Easy Pick 4, and uh, it. Um, uh, but I uh, I have to make some modifications to it in order to uh, make it uh, work on the, uh, the the target board. I'll show you that in a few minutes. What board we're actually going to use for the uh, for the machine? Uh, it'll be the same processor, but just on a different. Uh, board with not so many, uh, not such a big board, not so many inputs and outputs uh, that we don't really need for uh, for what we're doing. We've seen the uh, software <coughs> running on this uh, demo board, or development board, and running the motors, And uh, but to get ready to actually cut some gears, we need to uh, uh, to put it, you know, package it in a different way because, uh, as I said earlier, with chips flying around, this wouldn't last long at all. Um, so the uh, the next step is to fit it in a box and make it more compact. And uh, here's the start of that. Um, the box you see there with the big red button on is the uh, control box, and to the left of that are some of the components. And uh, I'll bring the, uh, the camera in a little closer here in a minute, and we'll uh, uh, look at, uh, at uh, what the different parts are and uh, how it's going to be put together. 
Okay, the first uh, step in this process was to uh, locate a, a PC board that uh, was much smaller than the development board I showed you and uh, would uh, meet uh, most of the needs. Uh, the um, uh, this is one that uh, there's lots of them out there. There's many different uh, boards that you can buy for depending upon which processor you're using or whatever. But this one uh, is one I had used before. It's uh, made by a company called Olimex. O L I M E X, um, and it's uh, uh, it's inexpensive. It's, it's twenty odd dollars, and uh, it uh, has a socket. Uh, you can plug in the same uh, processor that I had in my development board and uh, it's uh, uh, on the other side there's a display um, which you can use to uh, uh, in the same way that I used the one on the development board uh, it has a little different pin connections to it but not not a big deal and then there's two push buttons uh, uh, that you can use uh, I use those two for uh, 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 raising and lowering the numbers uh, for the tooth count and the uh, the number of inches that I want to move uh, on the uh, 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 the table. So uh, uh, that's got you know most of what I need. On the other side, there's a here is a programming connector which uh, you can use to program the microprocessor. Uh, so that makes that easy. And then uh, these two connectors are 10 pins each and they uh, connect to some of the I.O. pins on the uh, on the microcontroller so you can uh, uh, they're not the same pins I'm using now but uh, it's easy to change that in the software uh, to the uh, to connect to the pins you want and I'll use all 10 of these and probably I don't know four or five of these um, one of the connectors I don't know which one is which right now uh, has uh, has four I.O. pins and the other two are plus five and ground and uh, the other one has uh, it's all I.O. pins and uh, I, I need uh, eight uh, I.O. pins uh, for the uh, motor control uh, wires these uh, <coughs> these wires that uh, previously plugged into the development board this is actually an eight wire cable but uh, four of them are, are common uh, to one another so there's really five uh, pins used here uh, but again one of them is uh, 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 one of them is five volts and the other one are uh, uh, some of the other uh, the control four or four of them are control pins and the other one is uh, five volts to the uh, uh, to the uh, motor uh, control circuits so uh, these will be rewired now I'll take this off and uh, restrip them and rewire them to uh, to fit on uh, these connectors <coughs> there's um, and uh, so that takes care of the main processor uh, and now I need a like I said I need to put it in a box of some kind and uh, so um, I've got uh, I bought this <coughs> box from uh, digikey um, the uh, <coughs> there we go uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the the plastic box is just well <clears throat> easier said than done. Here, the plastic box is uh, was uh, just a component I got from DigiKey. By the way, um, this is this project is you know partly uh, mechanical and partly electrical and. Uh, for the guys that uh, come from the uh, electronics uh, background, they're going to know uh, exactly what uh, DigiKey is. Uh, and uh, for the, uh, uh, well, okay, let's see. For the mechanical guys, DigiKey is the electronics uh, version of McMaster Car. Uh, uh, there's DigiKey and another one called Mauser, which are, uh, are places that uh, have every kind of uh, electronic component you can imagine uh, and they're uh, they're set up for fast shipment fast delivery and easy to work with uh, uh, good uh, websites where you can find all the parts you want um, they got uh, you can uh, get into different menus and choose all the characteristics of the part you want and it'll come up with the part number you need and for uh, the guys that come from the electronic side you know what digikey is but uh, McMaster Car is the equivalent in, equivalent in the uh, 
in the electronics business. There's McMaster Car and there's also MSC, Manhattan Supply, uh, but both of those companies uh, uh, do a great job on the mechanical side. If you need pulleys or shafts or hardware or uh, you name it, anything that's, that's related to the mechanical side of the business, you can find it at uh, McMaster Car or MSC. So uh, anyway, I bought these uh, this box from DigiKey and um, <coughs> uh, I've got the, uh, you can see I've got the uh, um, uh, the Olimax board uh, already mounted in there and uh, the uh, then I uh, have got uh, push buttons here uh, that take the place of the push buttons I was using on the board. I use these two for increasing or decreasing the uh, the value of the the, uh, the two variables that I input uh, position or uh, table movement and you know, gear tooth count. This one I'm going to use as a next button to, to go to the next menu, uh, step in the menu uh, system. Uh, the green button is uh, the go button uh, and uh, that uh, when when you get when you got everything set and you're ready to you're ready then you hit the go button and it'll start to cut a gear. Uh, the red the small red button is the halt button uh, at the end of a cut. If you hold that button down uh, during a cut at the end of the cut it will halt the process but it will keep the uh, the motor that drives the uh, rotary table engaged so it can't turn. And if you want to make some adjustment in depth of cut or whatever, you can do that. And then you, when you hit the uh, the green button again, it'll go and continue to cut the gear until until it's finished. And the bottom one here, I intend to use for reset, uh, so that when you're all done with a part, why well, you can hit the reset button and it'll go back to the top and and uh, get ready to start cutting a new gear. Um, so these are the connectors that I'm going to use for the motor cables. These, the blue wires I showed you will be rewired to uh, to this connector and plug into this. Whoops, I'm out of the picture here. It, uh, I will uh, use a, a connector like this, which will plug into here. There's one for each motor, and uh, so I'll rewire the blue wires to to these cables. And uh, this is just a power jack for a wall. Uh, well plug uh, power supply a 5 volt power supply and that powers this board so that's that I've started to uh, oh and the big red button the big red button is my emergency stop button what I've done is uh, is I, I bought a, a relay a automotive 30 amp relay uh, that I'm going to put inside the power supply and uh, there'll be uh, three different ways to stop this thing. Uh, one of them is the big red button. If you push this in, it, it locks in and then you have to pull it back out again to start it. But the idea is if uh, if something is out of control or not doing what you expect or you got a whoops, uh, you can uh, you can hit the big red button and everything stops. It just kills the power to the motor so everything stops. Um, then the um, <coughs> uh, Let's see, the, the other way that I've come up with to stop the, uh, the system, um, <clears throat> I've worked on enough uh, software projects where you know that uh, there's always something's going to be going wrong that you don't expect. And if I'm not watching what's going on and the uh, uh, things get out of control, this is uh, uh, on my vertical mill, there's a place to mount a, uh, a double switch like this. Uh, that's intended for a limit switch on a power feed to go into the thing, but this is my own limit switch. These two switches are wired in series and they'll be in series with the big red switch. And so if any one of these switches is activated, uh, it, it will uh, cause the, uh, the power to be killed to the motors and everything stops. And this, uh, uh, there's adjustable uh, uh, stops on the mill. I'll show you later when we're at the mill, but it, uh, if the mill goes past the point where it's supposed to go and for some reason keeps on going, it'll hit one of these switches and kill the power. So that should uh, hopefully prevent any disasters. Um, so uh, I guess that's it. That's what we've done so far. It's a kind of a progress report uh, on this. Uh, I haven't got this button together yet because I'm not finished with the wiring. This is the what the back of it looks like. I've started to wire up the push button switches and the connectors but I still need to come up with uh, connectors to go on here and then come over and wire to these uh, to the rest of the pins on these connectors and uh, and uh, 
I guess that's it. And, oh, and there'll be like, some wires to the push buttons. And then this, this is just simple, just two wires connected to here to, uh, uh, to you know, to use if, if the, uh, if you hit the big red button to, to uh, disconnect the power. So, um, uh, that's it for that wiring. The next uh, segment here will probably be uh, getting things ready to mount on the mill. Um, oh, one other thing, maybe. Uh, <coughs> Uh, these motors are mounted uh, just on a, a board right now temporarily and uh, I've uh, made up these two parts. These are uh, pieces of uh, three inch aluminum angle that actually I had in my my junk pile uh, or my scrap uh, extra material pile I guess you're going to call it uh, that were uh, originally from, from another project they were left over from another project and so they happen to be the right size to uh, this one will mount the uh, the motor for the uh, that drives the rotary table and this one uh, will drive the uh, the mill table and so uh, we'll uh, in the next segment we'll uh, be setting this up once we finish the wiring on the on the uh, on the box here then we're gonna uh, we'll test that out and then uh, Maybe we'll have a, a short segment on testing that out, and uh, then we'll uh, start setting these up on the mill. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about gears here and uh, how you uh, how you know how to make a gear uh, with a given number of teeth and a given pitch and so on. Uh, there's an awful lot of uh, information about that. Probably the uh, the Bible is the uh, machinery's handbook. If you uh, if you don't own a copy of this, you probably should. If you're going to do something like this, um, uh, there's everything you could possibly want to know in uh, about gears in this book, and uh, uh, you could easily spend a uh, a week reading the uh, the chapters on gears. Uh, but um, uh, but if you have a question you can't get the answer to, this is certainly, uh, this is certainly the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, resources on the web, too. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of things. This one looks like it's third grade, but this is actually from MIT, and uh, believe it or not. And it has a lot of drawings that show you what, you know, the circumference of the gear is, the pitch, uh, uh, the, the uh, so-called diametrical pitch and the uh, uh, the pitch uh, the pitch diameter and uh, and so on and so there's educational things um, on the web. There's also um, charts. Uh, this is called Engineer's Edge, and you uh, there's a lot of information there too. Uh, there's uh, uh, endless uh, charts and tables and so on. And somewhere in this table, you're going to find uh, information on the gear you want to make uh, but it's it's you know these things are are not the easiest things to use either and uh, uh, it um, but and and so that yeah another uh, resource would be something like this this is one I used a lot of the formulas from it's kind of from a site called gizmology and uh, there's definitions of what all these things mean and uh, and uh, then uh, a set of formulas uh, to uh, calculate the diametrical pitch from, uh, depends on uh, what you have. Circular pitch is pi divided by diametrical pitch and uh, et cetera. Pitch diameter, uh, there's the uh, one that I used a lot was the, uh, the formula for outside diameter. I don't see that right now, but it's, it's in there somewhere. And... Uh, yeah, there's outside diameter is teeth plus two divided by diametrical pitch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're all simple formulas. There are only a couple of variables, uh, but um, uh, here's specifically for uh, metric gears. Um, but they're they're simple formulas. But uh, if you have to use them to calculate lots and lots of gears, it can be a problem. Um, for example, uh, here's just some calculations for a 120 tooth gear and a 100 tooth gear. At one point in time, I was uh, considering uh, using a, uh, uh, a 100 tooth gear because uh, at the time when I was thinking about using the uh, dividing head, 
all the teeth or all the gears I needed to make uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for, for uh, if, if I started with a uh, five tooth gear and ended with a hundred tooth gear I could make all the gears with the dividing head and uh, so um, uh, I was thinking about doing that but um, uh, later uh, when I've, I decided I was going to automate the process I decided I was going to go with a hundred twenty tooth gear and the reason is uh, uh, that I, I was kind of spooked by the idea of using something different than what the uh, original uh, inventor did. Um, I couldn't think of any reason why a, a, a series from 5 to 100 wouldn't work as well as a series from uh, 6 to 120, but uh, I'm going to be making a lot of gears and put a lot of work into this thing, and uh, I just didn't want to have uh, at some point uh, uh, later an aha, and so on. And so anyway, the, the uh, uh, the other thing I decided to use was metric gears instead of uh, imperial sizes, and the reason for that is that uh, uh, if you look on eBay and you try to find gear cutters that are at reasonable price, uh, there's a lot more to choose from uh, with the uh, the metric system. So the, the basic difference is uh, the metric uses a module uh, terminology and uh, uh, to, to for the the uh, pitch and size of the gear uh, uh, and the uh, uh, the, the Imperial uses diametrical pitch, but they're really very, very close to the same thing. It's just that the, there's more availability of these uh, of these gear cutters at a, at a reasonable price. And so, uh, uh, but the thing is, if you had to do this calculations for all the gears, and then say you changed your mind, you decided to go with a 100 tooth gear and a 0.8 module, or a uh, 120 tooth gear and a 0.7 module, you'd have to do it all over again. And so what I decided to do was uh, put it in a spreadsheet. Um, uh, people think about uh, spreadsheets uh, as something that accountants use, and they certainly are, uh, but they're really handy for a lot of other things. Uh, uh, this is a good example. Uh, the, uh, uh, what I did was I put all these simple, uh, those simple equations that I showed you in the previous uh, 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 in, in, a, in a previous uh, calculation uh, into a spreadsheet and uh, they're really easy to do um, if you want uh, for example this one here uh, uh, I, I using the module 0.7 and a six tooth gear I calculated uh, uh, what the OD was in millimeters and then this is uh, this here square uh, takes the millimeters and converts it to inches so that is E9 which is this uh, the cell here divided by 25.4 so that converts that to inches and all the other ones have simple formulas they're not complicated but packing them all in a spreadsheet like this really makes a difference and and uh, the reason is for example this this series of gears uses a module 0.7 which I converted here to a di diametrical pitch uh, and that's just another real simple formula and uh, this, uh, so I can see what the diametrical pitch was if we were using imperial uh, gears. And um, the, uh, then I did a, a, another calculation here to calculate the whole depth, which is the depth you have to cut the teeth, which is real important for making these things. You, have, you need to know that number. And, uh, and then uh, for each of the size gears, like this is a six tooth gear, for, so for this series I need 6, 12, 18, 24, etc. And uh, I have the gear number and then the, the number of teeth in that particular gear. And the whole thing is, uh, is uh, spread out on a spreadsheet. Uh, one of the most interesting things here is that uh, what's the biggest gear I'm going to need to make? And uh, that happens to be, in this case, uh, just a little more than uh, 3 and 3 eighths. Uh, so uh, we could get away with a 3 and a half or 3 and 3 eighths size uh, brass rod to make these, uh, the uh, cut these uh, uh, gear blanks out of. Uh, and that's important because brass is pretty expensive and uh, if you let this get too big it, it would get out of hand. And uh, so for example I could have used a module 0.8 uh, in the, uh, uh, instead of 0.7 and uh, if I change this to 0.8 uh, then uh, all these numbers change. Now uh, now the largest size gear is almost four inches, uh, 3.8. So uh, 
I, so I know what all the ODs are. I know what the whole depth uh, has to be, etc. Uh, and so I'm ready to, if I print this out, I can use it for making all the gear blanks and, and also knowing uh, how deep to cut the teeth. Uh, so um, uh, actually I said that I was going to use a, a 0.8 module with a, a five tooth gear. So now I have five as the smallest size and now you can see that I got 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. And that would be the, the, uh, the gears I would use if I started with a five tooth gear. And that comes out uh, a little less than three and a quarter for the, the largest gear. So that's a manageable size tool. But as I said, I decided I better stick with the, uh, uh, the uh, tooth numbers that the, uh, uh, that the designer originally used because uh, I, I'm afraid I'd run into an aha somewhere and, uh, and be sorry I did it. So, uh, oops, I'm sorry, that's going to, with six, you want point seven. So that's the set of gears I'm going to make, um, and uh, and this, but this is really handy, especially when I was trying to decide which uh, 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 you know which number of tooth counts and modules and all the other things that I wanted to use. So uh, anyway, and then uh, let's see if we go back to uh, the web here. Um, there's a, there's another thing if you don't that, this. Uh, this was uh, made with this spread chart uh, sheet was made with Microsoft Excel, and uh, if you don't, uh, it's part of the Microsoft Office thing. My version of Excel is very old, but it still runs fine on new computers. Um, uh, but if you want to, um, uh, if you don't have that, uh, there's actually a a, a free uh, spreadsheet on uh, Google. Um, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but now, but uh, Google has, uh, uh, if you're uh, become a sign up uh, with Google, you have got the free spreadsheet, and there's a free uh, uh, thing equivalent to Word for uh, creating uh, written documents, and uh, so it's pretty handy. So I actually I I hadn't really done much with uh, this free uh, spreadsheet or uh, from uh, Google, but I I use that for another. Uh, spreadsheet. This is a. Uh, I could have put this all on one, I guess, but uh, uh, this uh, we're getting back now to the motors uh, that are going to drive the thing. And in this case, uh, this is the one that's going to drive the uh, uh, the uh, rotary table. And we set that resolution at 6,400 counts uh, per revolution. And then there's a drive ratio in here, and uh, that's uh, 90. Uh, uh, the the uh, worm gear in the rotary table is 90, and I have a 2 to 1 uh, pulley arrangement, so I have a 180 to 1 drive ratio. And if you multiply these two numbers together, that's all this is, is the product of these two. That gives you the counts, number of counts or pulses that you have to send to the motor per table revolution. And you can see that's about uh, just over a million counts for a per table revol uh, revolution. So now if you want to make gears, um, uh, all you really have to do is take this number and divide it by the number of teeth in your gear, and that tells you how many counts per tooth. And uh, so for uh, like the one we made by hand here, this is uh, uh, a 30 tooth gear, the number of counts per tooth uh, would be 38,400. And uh, if you remember, I had to turn the crank three times. This is the number of crank turns you'd have to use to make that gear. And uh, for <clears throat> for the small gears, uh, it's pretty manageable numbers. Um, this would be a little tricky, but um, you can see that once you get to some of the bigger uh, tooth counts, these get to be really nasty numbers, and there's just no way on earth you could, uh, you could keep track of that in your head or any other ways when you're uh, trying to make these gears. So uh, I think the automation is really going to pay off here. Um, uh, so that's basically how we're going to do it, and uh, we'll um, we'll use this this uh, spreadsheet and the other one when we're uh, when we're actually uh, getting ready to bake the gears here. By the way, uh, if you have not yet watched this uh, series of videos by Bill Hammack. Um, they're the, uh, the ones that got me started on this program, and they really tell you a lot about 
what the harmonic analyzer is and uh, and how it works and uh, so I would recommend that you do that I will once again put a uh, a link uh, to that video at the uh, in the description of this one and uh, meanwhile uh, we've gotten up to about 30 minutes of video here so we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna wind this one up and uh, we will uh, be back uh, again when we've got the uh, uh, when we've got the electronics uh, wired up in its new housing and uh, when we're getting ready to, uh, to start uh, cutting a, a new gear uh, meanwhile, thank you for watching, and we'll see you real soon.